Hi, how you doing? We're gonna read from Walter Armstrong again. And this time, he's not angry. You may well have figured this out from the introduction, but this time we're going to talk about Walter Armstrong's opinion on Cumberland and Westmoreland wrestling. And I think if you've seen the other videos and you've heard how he tends to talk about other forms of wrestling and grappling, you probably know how this is going to go. So this is taken from the All England series book on wrestling written by Walter Armstrong. Very interesting character. Bit of a criminal, utterly obsessed with Cumberland and Westmoreland wrestling. I've made lots of videos talking about his attitudes and his thoughts and opinions on different forms of wrestling, be they Scottish, uh, Catch a Sketch Can, Lancashire, Japanese wrestling, as he called Jiu Jitsu. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit different. So uh, let's dive straight in. Wrestling, Chapter 1 Cumberland and Westmoreland Styles. The Northern School is, in our opinion, the proper one to graduate in, as it is evident if two men are able to keep their equilibrium with their arms confined in the manner demanded by the hold in this style, they necessarily secure a great advantage with that restriction removed, i.e. if they were allowed to unclasp their hands at will. It is an acknowledged fact that wrestlers who are proficient in the Cumberland and Westmoreland style can readily adopt and rapidly become experts in any other while the converse of this cannot be maintained. That's apparently an acknowledged fact. Um, uh, where were we? Ah, yes. The wrestlers are usually dressed in well-fitting and becoming costumes, and any lady may witness their competitions without her sense of delicacy being wounded in the least degree. Beyond all this, the northern style is freer from danger than any other known system. Now, that's quite... Um, Quite a claim, wouldn't you say? Indeed, during the writer's 40 years' experience, he cannot call to mind a single instance where a competitor has been hurt in a contest. 40 years, nobody got hurt in Cumberland and Westmoreland wrestling. I don't believe that. We know that old Walters are free and easy with the truth. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's just ignore that one. The rules. On taking hold, the wrestlers stand up chest to chest, each placing his chin on his opponent's right shoulder and grasping him round the body, each placing his left arm above the right of his antagonist. It's effectively an over and under clinch. When both men have got hold and are fairly on their guard, the play commences and with the exception of kicking, they are allowed to use every legitimate means to throw each other. If either party breaks his hold, that is, loses his grip, though not on the ground, and the other still retains his hold, the one leaving loose shall be the loser. If either man touches the ground with one knee only, or any other part of his body, though he may still retain his hold, he shall not be allowed to recover himself, but shall be deemed the loser. If both fall to the ground, the man who is first down, or falls under the other, shall be the loser. But if they fall side by side, or otherwise, so the umpires cannot decide which was first on the ground, it shall be what is technically termed a dog fall, and shall be wrestled over again. Uh, he goes on to talk a lot about the hold. Um, he goes on in great detail about Cumberland and Westmoreland, as you might expect, um, because clearly it's, it's God's own form of wrestling. It's, uh, it's the most beautiful, most scientific, most aesthetically pleasing, safest and most um, attractive to ladies uh, form of wrestling that there is, as we, we know full well from everything that Walter's told us. Um, I, I just love him so much. I love this utterly blinkered view he has, that the style of wrestling that he just so happens to have grown up learning uh, must be the best for lots and lots of reasons, not just because it's the one he can do. Um, and I guess we all feel like that to a degree. You know, I mean, I, I still firmly believe that catch is by far the best grappling art um, because that's the one that I've done for the most. Yes, I've dappled and played with others, but um, catch is the one for me. So what about you? 
do you still have a, a kind of an, an unreasonable attachment to the first style that you, you, you learned, the first kind of system, whether it's grappling or striking, who knows? Well, there's lots of buzzing going on over there. I'm sorry if that's coming across the mic. I failed to turn the volume down on, on, on my, uh, my notifications. Never mind. We'll just pretend they're not there. Yeah, did you... The first style you learned, do you have an unreasonable aff affection for it? Um, for me, really, it was Aikido. That was the first martial art I ever really trained in. And um, I have some fairly strong opinions about Aikido, but it's taken a long time for me to get to the point where I didn't really think it was, it was pretty awesome. But we'll, we'll talk about Aikido in another video. I think it deserves its own. But for now, I'm going to leave it there because I want to get this video out relatively quickly. I um, hope you well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Fight team.